We have one uh, runner that's pushing a youngster in a stroller. Looks like number 187 is out in front. 187 making his way to the top of the hill, followed by 159 and 102 pushing that stroller. Big round of applause and we have a winner of the Green Mountain Mile. There's gonna be many more runners making their way shortly. Give each and every one of them a big round of applause as they make their way to Bank Hill in Waterbury on Main Street. It's a personal best time for many of them. It's a hobby for many of them. Here comes number 172. On his way to the finish line and there he goes across the finish line of the Green Mountain Mile. You can see as they're shaking their heads back and forth the humidity is taking its toll on some of these runners. It is a strenuous endeavor to make it a full mile at more or less sprint feed. There goes number 140. It's not like a marathon, it's almost a sprint all the way. The kick is from the very beginning of a mile race. Round of applause for number 120, young man making his way up uh, Bank Hill. Number 141, you can see that humidity is bearing down as the runners make their way north along Main Street in the village of Waterbury. Seeing a lot of young teens in this group coming up now, some youngsters, perhaps preteen. Looks like a sprint to the top. It's particularly tough to have a hill like this right at the very end of a one-mile race because, as I say, it's a sprint. The kick begins with the first step as you embark on the Green Mountain Mile here in Waterbury. It's become a popular race over the years for many runners. There'll be another mile race coming your way next week in Montpelier, the Montpelier Mile. Here comes number 14 up the hill. Young man making his way to the top of the hill. Number 188. Ponytail flying in the wind and she's on her way. Another ponytail on the way up the hill right now. Several youngsters. Some very young runners on the route right now. And they look like they're holding up exceedingly well. In fact, the younger runners look like they're holding up a lot better than some of the older ones. There's number one making his way to the finish line with a nice wide open stride up Bank Hill in Waterbury. Congratulations. I'm completing the Green Mountain Mile. The runners look like they're having a good time, but it's a real struggle and it's a real race. A lot of these people are looking for personal bests, improving on their times from previous years. Wearing his Red Sox cap, there he goes up to the top of the hill to the Green Mountain Mile. As you can see, the runners are pretty well spread out all along the route now. The elite runners came in uh, a few minutes ago, and now we're looking at uh, many of the hobby runners, the participants that are here again to set their own personal best record. Number 123 making his way up the hill now, 154, a couple of youngsters, 155 and 153 side by side coming up the hill as well. Looks like there's families out here, couples out here. We've seen youngsters that look like they're down into the mid-single digits as far as age is concerned. I haven't seen any real seniors on the route just yet, but certainly some 30-somethings, 40-somethings, and 50-somethings on the route. Here comes number 185, making her way up the hill, red, white, and blue attire on, the beautiful blonde hair in the breeze, and she's gonna make it up to the top of the hill to complete the Green Mountain Mile. A lot of families involved. Holding hands, number 201 and 202 as they make their way to the finish line. Lots of moms and dads, dads and daughters, fathers and sons, brothers and sisters in the race. Here comes another runner pushing a stroller with a youngster in the stroller. I don't think the youngster's broken a sweat, but number 128 is doing a great job. Congratulations, number 128, on your way to the finish line. A couple of youngsters along with him. Looks like a family here, number 23, leading this group up the hill. A few kicking into a sprint for the past uh, last 100 yards or so at the Green Mountain Mile. 
It's a fairly flat route until you get just about to uh, the Prohibition Pig, and then you feel that grade up, and you feel the burn as you make your way to the top of Bay Hill. Look at number 20. There's the strollers. Again, big round of applause. Number 61 making their way up the hill. You're watching the Green Mountain Mile on Main Street in Waterbury Village, the opening act of the Not Quite Independence Day celebration, and they're huffing and puffing, big smile on her face as she makes her way up the hill, pushing the stroller, also number 72. Room for the runners, and certainly plenty of room when our big parade steps off just in a matter of minutes. Another sprint to the finish line at the Green Mountain Mile. As I said, it's a humid day out there, and that humidity is really making it difficult for some. One way or another. Look at this little one, number 166. Number 166, absolutely adorable. Look at this. Somebody get a picture. We need pictures of this young lady. Look at her go. I could be wrong, but that's got to be the youngest runner out there today. Let's hear it for her. That's terrific. We got a few that are straggling in at the end. It's a real accomplishment, and folks, don't make light of it. If someone comes in at the very end of the pack, they still completed a race that I couldn't even begin to complete. I'd be crawling on Main Street after the first 100 yards. So give them all a big round of applause, no matter where they finish in this race. It's a race for many, but it's an endeavor for many as well. Here comes another 173. Look at this tiny tight. She's going to make it. Look at those pigtails. She's doing great. Pigtails, make it to the top of the hill and you're there, pigtails. Let's go, pigtails. Big round of applause for pigtails. Here's another one, 165. She's doing great. Got her little headband on, holding a hand, to giving her a little encouragement. She's going to make it. Give him the encouragement. It's that number 108 over there. He's doing well, too. Got his ball cap on, making his way, number 162, number 192. They're gonna make it, red cap is focused. That looks like a family endeavor there. Mom and dad are giving him the encouragement. He's gonna make it. Look at this little guy, little orange shirt. We're coming up to the end of the Green Mountain Mile. I think we have one more participant. Give this fella a round of applause. Give the encouragement, number 112. Number 112, we're with you, buddy. Keep on plugging, buddy. You're going to make it. There you go. Sprint to the finish. Number 112. And it looks like we're down to the end. Congratulations, all of the participants in the Green Mountain Mile. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets red Still there. Oh, say, does that star spangled banner yet wave or the Ladies and gentlemen, Gary Moreau. And that's the way the song is supposed to be sung. We're going to have our parade making its way here very shortly. They're on Main Street, headed north. Started way down on...
Independence Day celebration. Congratulations again to all the runners in the Green Mountain Mile. Thanks to the Waterbury Fire Department for putting their grand and glorious stars and stripes over the roadway here as the parade makes its way our way, almost to the fire department as we speak. For those of you who are from out of town, we welcome you to Waterbury. This village has grown and has become so beautiful over the past several years. The metamorphosis of Waterbury began about 10 or 12 years ago and has continued and uh, was kind of spurred along, oddly enough, by Tropical Storm Irene. It's by the crosswalk, almost in front of the fire station. It might be stopped in front of Albert Karen's place, or pretty close to it, Albert being the Grand Marshal of this year's parade. Louise Reed and Marianne Larkin are the judges for the various entries in the parade, and we'll be stopping the winners in various categories right here in front of our reviewing station and presenting them with their uh, certificates of uh, recognition and congratulations. By the cruiser of the Waterbury Police Department. Fireworks get underway at dusk tonight. And there's many, many good viewing areas all around this community. Take your time, be patient with the traffic, especially after the fireworks are over, and you'll have a good time. The Not Quite Independence Day Parade celebration is underway, it has been underway for a few minutes now, but it's finally reaching our venue, our viewing vantage point here on Bank Hill in Waterbury. And first of all, a warm welcome and thank you to the Waterbury Police Department. <laughs> on duty all the time, watching out for our community. We thank leading the way as they have for so many years as Waterbury celebrates Independence Day in its own way. Many years ago, it used to be on Independence Day weekend, and then as we mentioned earlier, they decided to move it a week earlier uh, to give everybody a shot at uh, going to various celebrations and not competing with one another, and it's worked out great. People come from near and far to come to Waterbury for this week before Independence Day celebration. And QID. Lots of great food this year, lots of great brews, always lots of great music. All Things Vermont, the theme for this year's parade. It's a pretty broad category, so there should be some entries that cover a lot of different uh, ways of looking at that. Check your listings, incidentally, and listen to the party calendar on WDEV over the next several days because we'll have announcements on where all the other celebrations are this week and next weekend. There's plenty of them going on. We'll be broadcasting parades in Warren, Vermont. We'll have our usual. We'll be involved in the Moscow Parade, providing the music on the radio. A very interesting and unique way of celebrating Independence Day for a radio station inviting the community with boom boxes to march in their local parade. That'll be next weekend. And ladies and gentlemen, let this color guard stand as the people that we honor, as we honor America, and thank the American Legion for their service. These men and women of the American Legion over the years are the people that have kept America free and fought for our causes around the world. We welcome the American Legion of Waterbury and the Color Guard. Many thanks to the men and women who serve this country. Decade in, decade out. Regardless of politics, they stand up, step forward, and take the oath.
Again, we'd ask spectators to make sure you stay off the parade route so there's plenty of room for the parade itself to make its way through here. Once again, a big round of applause for the American Legion and the men and women who serve. This year, congratulations to Albert Karen, our Grand Marshal. There's a fellow who does a lot for the community, a lot for the Boy Scouts, runs a great business here in town. Albert, congratulations, our Grand Marshal. A truly patriotic individual. Now we have Governor Scott's, Phil Scott's contingent here in the parade here today in their green shirts. Marching in the parade as they will no doubt in many parades. There he is, I was wondering if he's actually here. Governor Phil Scott, the governor of the state of Vermont. Thank the governor for being here today to help us celebrate not quite Independence Day in the community of Waterbury. And there's the big dog of the parade. If you were wondering who the big dog is, there's the big dog. And here we have Congressman Peter Welsh's contingent in the parade and the Congressman himself here on a weekend away from Washington. A big round of applause and welcome for Congressman Peter Welsh. Beautiful day. Beautiful day to be in Vermont. Tom Stevens marching in the parade. Waterbury Democrats marching in the parade for the not quite Independence Day celebration. And we welcome them. We talk about those who serve their communities day in, day out in these Independence Day parades across the Green Mountain State, as well as all across the country, are a great opportunity to thank those, this particular contingent celebrating 46 years, the Waterbury Ambulance Service. If you're not a member, you should be. Watch for that card in the mail when it comes, write out a check and send it in. Believe you me, you'll not regret it. The Waterbury Ambulance Service. And again, it's important to note that the Waterbury Fire Department is a completely volunteer operation, and here they come. Let's give a big round of applause and a grateful thank you to all of those men and women who serve in the Waterbury Fire Department. There's their utility vehicle. That's going to be followed by Rescue 1 and Rescue 2. The Waterbury Fire Department. Bright red trucks all polished up and waxed and looking spiffy. They got the stars and stripes flying over Main Street. And they do a great job for us 365 days of the year. Waterbury Fire Department. It's no small undertaking to volunteer to your local fire department, and these men and women do it year in, year out. They're there when we need them.
Ladies and gentlemen, we now welcome the community band. of applause for the community band. Ladies and gentlemen, the Waterbury Not Quite Independence Day Parade and Celebration welcomes Miss Vermont, Erin Connor. Erin's from Bridport, Vermont. We welcome here, her to our celebration. Happy Independence Day celebration to Miss Vermont, Erin Connor. Doing her job to represent the state of Vermont all over the state and most likely beyond the borders of the state of Vermont. Next we have the Waterbury Children's Room. Saving our planet for Vermont's children, the Waterbury Children's Room. And they are green. Look at those outfits. And that certainly is one of the things that could be considered all things Vermont. Keeping it green. Let's hear it for the Waterbury Children's Room. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, groo grooves and brews. It's all afternoon down at the uh, Fars Field. Music, beer, fireworks, groovesandbrews.com. Try to say that five times fast. We want to make, give a big thank you to the Waterbury Rotary Club who puts this all together year after year after year. Thank you, Waterbury Rotary Club. This is their tractor delegation. In case you haven't figured that out already. delegation for winning most entertaining tractor. There's Justin Blackman with his entertaining tractor for sure. He's done more than a few entertaining tractors over the years. Congratulations to the Waterbury Rotary Club. They're handing out products from Caring Green Mountain. We are so proud to have the Vermont National Guard here with us today. Thank you for your service. Most recently, thank you and welcome home to Vermont, the Vermont National Guard. <laughs> Men and women all across the state of Vermont step up and serve, and they've done so admirably over the years. And our nation knows when they need someone to go and do the job, they can call on the Green Mountain Contingent, the Vermont Army National Guard, and the Air National Guard for that matter as well. 
Hands-on science education comes to us from Four Winds Nature Group, Thatcher Brook Primary School. Look at this float. What a great float. They've got their solar panel up there, and they're saving the planet. Hands-on science education. Thatcher Brook Primary School. Every year they participate in this event and many others. That school is a focal point of the community of Waterbury. Sons of the American Legion putting the stars and stripes all along Main Street and maintaining those flags. We want to thank them for the work they've done. And the organizers, of course, of this event and many others, the Concert in the Park series, the Waterbury Rotary Club. And here we have a 1953 F-100. Driven by a truck. What a great color. Beautiful truck. Ladies and gentlemen, you want to see some good hockey, some great competition, sports at its best? How about Harwood hockey? We've got the Harwood hockey team. Harwood youth hockey. Congratulations to them. The theme on the side of their float, and I love it, you miss 100% of the shots you never take. Harwood Youth Hockey. If you enjoy good sports, you'll certainly enjoy a Harwood Hockey game next winter. Be sure to go to one right here at the Ice Center in Waterbury. You will not be disappointed. From Montpelier, Senator Ann Cummings is here with us. Welcome to Waterbury, Senator. We hope you're enjoying the Not Quite Independence Day Parade, and later on today, the celebration that goes on all day here in the beautiful community of Waterbury. Have we conjured up a beautiful day for you today, or what? Just about perfect. It looks like we're gonna have the uh, CrossFit of Waterbury and a little physical fitness demonstration coming our way. They're gonna haul a truck up Bank Hill. We talked about earlier completing the, Mount, the uh, Green Mountain Mile and how arduous that was for those runners. Get this, folks. Here they come. You gotta cheer them on. You gotta give them support. CrossFit Waterbury, here they go. Up the hill, go, go, go. Keep on plugging, here you go. They're not going to stop. Don't let them down. Give them support. CrossFit Waterbury. They're pushing. It's not easy, folks. Give them a big shout. Don't let them down. And they're going to make it. Waterbury. Great three wheel motorcycle coming our way.
Boy, CrossFit Waterbury, they earned their keep today, that's for sure. That's a level of fitness I can't even begin to relate to. <laughs> We're gonna let the music carry the way here. Hannaford Fife and Drum, they tour many, many parades around Vermont. When they get up here to our location, please give them a big Waterbury warm welcome to the Hannaford Fife and Drum Corps. Let's hear it for the Hennifer Volunteers of Underhill, the Fife and Drum Corps. Certainly a big part of this community, Ben and Jerry's Ice Cream. They do a lot in the community that you may not even know about. Giving their product out for various organizations and causes. They employ a lot of people, and they do a lot for the community, and it's been a great many years. Ben and Jerry's factory has been located right here in Waterbury, and we're glad to have them. The people who work at Ben and Jerry's take their role very seriously of serving the community and being a part of the community, and we're yeah, the driver in particular looks like he's really into it. Chickens have become popular in Vermont. Ben and Jerry's ice cream. Looks like they're giving out some great treats along the parade route. Enjoy that. A warm welcome to Ben and Jerry's ice cream. Music tonight at the Zen Barn, we're told, on that poster. Got some livestock on board. We welcome the Zen, board, uh, Zen Barn. Hot picking party. The Zen Barn. Thanks for being here. Always a favorite all across New England. Mount Sinai, the Shriners. Love those go-karts, love those clowns, but most importantly, everyone loves the great work the Shriners do year in, year out for children and others. We are so proud of them and so thankful to them for everything that they do, the Shriners. Don't think for a moment that they're just a parade float. There's so much more than that, and they're so meaningful, their service to this entire region. Shriners for being in our parade. The Shriners Hospitals for Children do such good work, such important work. They don't ask for any thanks, but they deserve a great deal of gratitude from literally everyone. 
There's hardly a family anywhere that has not been touched by the work done by the Shriners. On top of that great work, they put in a great parade float. Shriners Clowns, always a favorite. Doing wheelies for us. This is the Waterbury Not Quite Independence Day Parade and Celebration. Now we have the Seminary Arts Center of Waterbury. The summer art camps that they offer at Seminary Arts Center. And we want to congratulate them for best use of theme in this year's parade, Everything Vermont. Seminary Arts Center, congratulations. Everything Vermont and the best use of that theme in their float with their Vermont Strong license plate on the side. Big whale tail that you'll see on top of the vehicle and also on the side of the interstate. Got a Holstein on a bike on the back, of course. Seminary Art Center in Waterbury, best use of theme in the parade. She was wearing a blue hat. Go figure. Marching to her own drummer. Winooski Lodge 49, the Masons. They are another organization that does a great deal of good all across Vermont and all around the country. We welcome the Masons, Winooski Lodge number 49. Proud to be a Mason, Freemasonry, making good men better. The Masons. And thank you for being in the not quite Independence Day parade. No parade is complete without at least a few contingents from fire departments around the region. Waterbury is here, of course. Tanker number one, the Waterbury Fire Department. The volunteers that are there standing by 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, year after year. We thank them. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have not yet been to the new Waterbury Public Library on Main Street in Waterbury, you need to go there. It's a state-of-the-art facility. It's beautifully run. It's just a terrific place. You can spend time there. They love having you come in for a visit. It's a centerpiece of our community. We welcome the Waterbury Library to today's parade. What a great job they do. The Waterbury Public Library, they built that new building here a little while ago and it's a great place to go and have a cup of coffee, enjoy some good company, some beautiful views out over the Dacro Field and the forests out beyond the back of the river and enjoy a good book, take home a good book. Such an asset to our community, the Waterbury Public Library. We've talked about fitness a couple of times here this morning. Here's some people that are fit. The Central Vermont Gymnastics Academy. 
These young people are doing some handstands and cartwheels for us. And they are the vision of fitness. Central Rock Gymnastics Academy. Cartwheeling up Bank Hill on Main Street in Waterbury. We've been talking about service to our community from a number of different organizations and service to the region, the state, and the country. One organization that certainly provides a great deal of service to the community of Waterbury, right on Stowe Street in Waterbury. They've touched so many lives over the years. The Waterbury Area Senior Center. Great people doing a great job with Meals on Wheels, activities at the Senior Center. We thank them so much for being a part of this community. And I would have said that even without the bribe of the cookies. <laughs> it's worth saying, folks, we have one of the best communities in the entire world right here. We welcome the volunteer fire departments from surrounding communities to our parade. Middlesex Volunteer Fire Department. When there's a mutual aid call, they all band together and provide the protection that we need. Engine number six from the Middlesex Volunteer Fire Department. I think it's safe to say when you talk about the community of Waterbury and the broader community of the state of Vermont, there's a very lively arts community all across the Green Mountain State. Here's the Green Mountain Performing Arts of Waterbury. Let's hear it for the Green Mountain Performing Arts of Waterbury. And again, a big warm welcome to a, one of our surrounding communities, volunteer fire departments from Bolton, engine number one. Welcome to Waterbury for the Bolton Fire Department. Here comes engine number two sparkling red and white in the sunshine of central Vermont, the Bolton Volunteer Fire Department. Sends a big thank you, they say. Waterbury Recreation. 
Let's hear it again, nice and loud. They've got some day camps going on. If you want to know more about it, I'm sure they'd love to hear from you. I remember being young once, just barely. Again, a big Waterbury welcome to one of our surrounding community fire departments from Waitsfield, the fire department of Waitsfield and Faston, engine number five. <laughs> Sabona Kata. We're here every year. We welcome them to Waterbury to be in our parade. Always great to have them. Since 1995, Sabutakata. There go our judges before us. Got some military vehicle here. Ladies and gentlemen, the Stowe Antique and Classic Car Show will take place this year in Stowe. This contingent is the Vermont Automobile Enthusiasts. They've got 19 units here. They're going to have hundreds on the field in Stowe in just a month or so during August for the final show in Stowe, Vermont. But don't be worried. The show's not going away. It's coming to Waterbury. 
The Vermont Antique and Classic Car Meet will be in Waterbury in 2018, right on Fars Field, where our celebration is today. Look forward to that. A lot of big plans being put in place as they make the transition from Stowe down Route 100 to the community of Waterbury for a great beginning and a new era for the Vermont Antique and Classic Car Meet. Look forward to that in 2018, right here in Waterbury. Look at some of these beautiful vehicles they brought in for us today. Just a sampling of what you'll see on the field in Stowe in what, four or five weeks? The first full weekend in August, I believe it is. 11th, 12th, and 13th. Military vehicles, passenger vehicles, pickup trucks, large trucks, they've got them all. There's a little Volkswagen convertible there. Mercedes-Benz convertible. That's a pretty one. Let's see those headlights one more time. I feel like I'm in the, the parade in Stowe already. It's coming up, folks. Enjoy it in Stowe. You'll be in the parade. Great. Here's one that's always in the parade in Stowe, the Middlesex Electric uh, Department. With their beautiful truck. Again, military vehicles. I don't think the machine gun is functional, so don't worry about that. <laughs> but it probably was at one time. I think the Green Mountain military has been sprinkled in with the Vermont automobile enthusiasts. Nothing like a big old black Cadillac in a parade. That's a beauty. Look at that, sparkling in the sunshine. Right at the very earliest beginnings of the big Finn era. Beautiful Cadillac. You got a Plymouth convertible. Who's that guy? Barbieri. Chris Barbieri, former executive director of the Vermont Chamber of Commerce. Got his Plymouth Valiant in the parade. Here's a mail truck that's often in the parade in uh, Stowe. It'll be in the parade in Waterbury in 2018. You heard the term, not your father's Buick? Well, this is your father's Buick. More likely, your grandfather's Buick. Perhaps your great grandfather's Buick. And it's a beauty. During the summer months, we see them out doing the work, rebuilding Vermont every year, making our roads greater. Organizations like Griffin and Griffin. Doing the hard work to keep the, the world rolling. The great construction companies, here's one of them, Griffin and Griffin. Alliance Church, Christian Alliance Church, represented in the parade today. They're just south of Waterbury in Duxbury or Moortown, I'm not sure which. Nobody's sure which. Duxmoorbury, we call it. Another entry from uh, one of our visiting fire departments from around the region. We welcome the Moortown Fire Department with engine number one. Welcome to Moortown. Uh, 
You want a crowd pleaser in a parade? Go for mini horses. Donna Sherman brings mini horses to us. And they're beautiful, Donna. Aren't they adorable? A lot of people enjoy the line dancing hobby around Central Vermont, and they entertain a lot of people at events like this and many others. The Step In Time Line Dancers. How many of you were Cub Scouts when you were little? Raise your hands, Cub Scouts. Here we have Cub Scouts Pack 711. All things Vermont, they put together, together a great float. Cub Scouts Pack 711, Waterbury Duxbury, chartered by the American Legion Post 59. Great float. Cub Scouts, great organization. Okay, no round of applause for these folks. We want you to laugh at them. The Waterbury Improv Troupe. Give them a big laugh, everybody. Ha, ha, ha. Waterbury Comedy Troupe and Improv. scare anybody, but we've got a dinosaur on the route. A T-Rex at that. Those T-Rex has been around town for a while now. entry in this year's not quite Independence Day celebration parade, Paradise Acres. Congratulations, most patriotic. Got that red, white, and blue pony over there. Everybody's wearing red, white, and blue. And looking patriotic. Play ball, neighbor, it says on the front of the float. Clyde Lit uh, Whittemore Little League. Play ball. Little League's a great institution in this country. Gives a lot of young people a chance to get out and play ball. Get out and support them. You want to watch a good ball game? Go to one of their ball games. We got Mark Foster coming our way, riding a 
reminding Mabel, a 10-year-old Belgian mare. What a beautiful steed it is. Beautiful horses. Want to thank everybody for coming out for the Not Quite Independence Day Parade and the celebration, which will continue right into the evening hours tonight. All the festivities take place down on Fars Field. Lots of good beer down there. Lots of good music down there. Take the family. Enjoy yourself. It's going to be a beautiful afternoon. And hang around for the fireworks tonight. Get yourself a good vantage point to see the great fireworks display. And enjoy Not Quite Independence Day. Now we're going to let the music carry the day here for a moment. From the Crossett Brook Middle School, the marching band of the Crossett Brook Middle School. Crossett Brook Middle School, theme from Rocky. What a great marching band, the Crossett Brook Middle School. We're down to the final few entries in the Waterbury, not quite Independence Day Parade, the Waterbury Mission. Waterbury Mission, reaching, teaching, and loving the world like Jesus. The Waterbury Mission. One of the many great houses of worship around the community of Waterbury. And they always do the cleanup. They have for the last several years, providing a service to this parade and service to the community that they love, the Waterbury Mission Church. Coming up to the conclusion of the Waterbury Independence Day celebration, Waterbury Fire Department, Seth Warner Engine Company, again a beautiful sparkling red fire truck here in the parade in Waterbury, and many thanks to all the volunteers that provide the service that we so depend on year in, year out. And the Waterbury Ambulance. If you're not already a member of the Waterbury Ambulance Squad, by all means sign up. Your day will come and you'll be glad you did. They've been serving this community for many years and they need your financial support. All you have to do is be a member. It doesn't cost much, but it goes a long way in helping provide the service. And the Sheriff's Department bringing us to the conclusion of the Not Quite Independence Day Parade. Ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause to all of the entries in today's parade. And the Shriners, the Mount Sinai Shriners. We hit you, don't worry. <laughs> there you go. Big shout out to the Waterbury Rotary Club for all that they do all year long. Ladies and gentlemen, have a great, not quite, Independence Day celebration. I'm Tom Beardsley, along with Eric Michaels. We thank you for being here. It's a pleasure for us. We hope you have a great and safe celebration this weekend and next weekend all across Vermont. Thank you.